Here we are at a cave in Kentucky. I'm here with my friend Brad Godby, my brother David Krubal, and the uh, videographer Nathaniel Stein. So we're gonna do a quick review of the Brick 5 survey device. As you guys know, usually we use Disto X2s in the caves. They are very old. This is about the best option you have for a new survey device. So we have an objective. We need to sketch this entrance to this cave. It's massive. I need to take a microbial sample. I need to remove something. I need to fix a formation. I need to know where that thing is. I need to be able to explain to someone where that thing is in the cave. So in this example, I'm taking a microbial sample. I'm not actually doing that. I need to put on the map where I'm taking that sample from. So I'd start, I'd sketch out, or I'd make a line plot of the cave, as I just mentioned earlier. Then I would sketch the walls, I'd sketch some formations, I'd sketch where things are so that I can navigate through here. And I would find a spot where there's a good sample, something that I need, whether it be a geological sample, a microbial sample, something like that. And I would put on that map where I took that sample from. So now I can come back in years to come and know exactly where I took that sample. I can know exactly where there might be more samples. It's just a useful thing for cave science. We can't do research in caves without knowing where we're going. So <laughs> sketching a good map of the cave is essential for anything like this. So we're gonna map this cave. Here we are at station number two. We're shooting a line plot from station number two to station number three. So I'd sit on station number two, put it to station number three, take a shot. I would usually take a few shots, three to be exact, just to make sure it's not I'm not shooting in the wrong place or going behind it or something like that. So now we have three measurements. Distance, 1.44. Azimuth, 140.6-ish. Inclination, 28.3. So what are those measurements? So those measurements, if I'm standing right here and I'm looking north. So compass or azimuth, as it's called there, is like where you're looking in the plan view. So like, if that's north, that's zero, or 360, then I'd go this way, that's 90, 180, 270, <laughs> and then 360. So like, that's one measurement in this, this, these three shots. Now you've got inclination. So if you're flat, you're like this, that's zero. If you go up that way, positive 90 degrees, and you go down that way, you got negative 90 degrees. And you have distance, think of it just like a tape measure, it's a distance between one point to the other. So those three measurements will give you a line plot through the whole cave that you can reference to sketch the map of the cave. Yeah. Which is useful when you're, cave map you're mapping a cave or, you know, it could be miles long, you gotta close loops, things have to be accurate. It is Pretty nice, and it works great. The only downside is it is big. But other than that, it works great. It's got like uh, redundant sensors in it. It's got a new USB-C charging port, which I would recommend putting some tape over because that is kind of, kind of flimsy, could be a downside. But other than the charging port needing some tape over it and the uh, size of it, it is a pretty good survey device. Okay, so here's the Brick 5. To turn it on, you just do three clicks of that button right there. It's good, it's waterproof. So, the downside, there's not a good Pelican case to really store it in. The M50 case, Pelican case, is about the best size that fits it, but there's still a lot of room in there. So what I've been doing, so I've got the Brick 5, I've got my little tiny survey book, which I hope to upgrade to a tablet because this does have Bluetooth capability. And I got a little pencil in there. So like it fits the things that I don't want to get wet or muddy on the way to the survey area. To navigate through the brick, or in the brick, you have four buttons here. You can go to your menu, you got different options. One nice thing about the brick is you've got last five shots, and you also have a little E there for if it has an error. And what you can do is you can go to the menu, pressing this button, you can go down to error info, select it, and it'll tell you what the reason you're getting that, that error for. It's got redundant sensors in it. It's got things to figure out if it's not getting a good shot. So it's nice to be able to know that. So 
On this one, I just purchased it. It's got arrows on all the shots because I haven't done a full calibration yet. So what we're gonna do today in this awesome cave, it is honestly perfect. It's a big area, plenty of places to shoot survey shots. We're gonna calibrate the brick five. Okay, okay so on the screen here, just kidding, we'll continue with this. You have time, you've got temperature, you've, you've got battery level, <laughs> and then you've got your reference number, your error bar, you've got distance, azimuth, and inclination. To calibrate a brick five, we basically have to make 14 stations in a circle around one point where we're shooting the, the, the measurements from. So the way the brick five works, you know, it has azimuth, inclination, and distance. So we want our survey stations to be around the point where we're shooting the, the shots from. And they have to be to where they're, you know, going up in inclination, down in declination, and then all the way around this point. So we get as, as like most azimuth values. I've taken a little bit of flagging and then a Sharpie and wrote down different station names all the way around this one point. So we're gonna shoot shots to each of those points. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it on this area where we're shooting the stations. And we're gonna put it down to it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt the brick five 90 degrees, shoot another shot, tilt it again, shoot another shot, and tilt it again, shoot another shot. And then we'll have four shots that I can go off. So we've got four, we've got at least 14 stations, four shots each. We're gonna do it pretty quick, and then this thing will be calibrated. <laughs> There's one thing I have to do. If you go to display, you can change the color <laughs> of the brick five. So if you want to nice. be fancy while you're cave serving, the only reason you should buy a brick over a disto. Color changing screen. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they take, there's a three month wait. I guess I could say that as another downside. We do need to do this. Okay. Tense. Calibration, full calibration. Press any button. Yeah, okay, now we start the calibration. That's gonna be difficult. Action. So we changed the rock. <laughs> you're gonna find that it's kind of hard to uh, tilt. <laughs> you're gonna tilt the brick five down like that to get a lower inclination measurement. I don't know, it's something to think about. <laughs> We're gonna start calibrating now. We're on shot zero of 14. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna start like this. Got it. We're gonna tilt 90 degrees while keeping this in the same place. Take another shot. We're gonna tilt 90 degrees again while keeping this in the same place. Tilt 90 degrees again while keeping this in the same place. Shift it a little bit. Okay, now we got the first one. Those four will be, you know, solid. And it will, you can move on to the next shot and start shooting shots and it will automatically detect the new orientation. So I will go over here. So first station was right there. Second station is gonna be over there. I'm gonna put it right on this point here so I know where to go. <laughs> And again, so those were not filled in before. Now they are filled in and I just go to the next one. I'm gonna do that 14 times, 14 different stations and make sure that they go over as much of the inclination and the azimuth around that I can do. You want a good distribution between the magnetometer and the accelerometer? To try to find places that this arrow lines up in the gaps that I don't have. So like I don't have one like way over here, like one line. I don't have one line like right there or right there. 
So you can see where these arrows are lining up. So I'm setting stations where those arrows fall in those gaps so that I can fill in the, the missing places. Have you got your shoes wet yet, Brian? No, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> Here we are doing a survey with the Brick 5 in a cave. I'm hanging on rope here. There's the previous survey station SOM4, that dot on the wall over there. And down here is survey station number 5 on this rock. And then all the way down there is Chelsea, Hello. right by survey station number six. What I'm going to do is line up the brick five on this survey station here. I'm going to shoot the laser down to Chelsea. You did? Yeah. It's on the one right here. Okay. I'm going to line up the laser with the next station and take three shots. I wonder why I didn't do the three little beeps that time. There is one, the azimuth is a little different. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll take another one.